Hey guys, Grandy Tamias here, and it's been a while since I talked about anything Sonic, so why not today? And with hype from the second movie having died down, I figured I had enough time to reflect and refine my theories, particularly on something that I found very confusing upon my first viewing. Now, if you've seen my video on Shadow and my full review for the second movie, you'd know that I had some concern about how the filmmakers would adapt Shadow's origin story. The film's mid credit scene seems to imply that Shadow's creation has a similar origin as seen in the video games, in which he is closely tied to the Robotnik family. In fact, in some concept art released not too long ago, we can even see what many have presumed to be the corpse of Gerald Robotnik, with the same equations and formulas written on the walls on Prison Island in Sonic Adventure 2. However, this supposed origin is incongruous with what we know about Dr. Robotnik in the first film, in which he himself says that he was an orphan. Nice. Rub that in my orphan face. Could this be just a simple retcon? Probably. But with the writers Pat Casey and Josh Miller being the same across the first and second films, and presumably that'll be the case for the third as well, I doubt that they'd let an oversight like this happen. And now that the Guardian Unit of Nations exists in the film continuity, I think I've figured it out. Let's get to it. As I said in the other videos, it seems like a huge coincidence that the government scientist who didn't know about alien hedgehogs just so happens to have a family history that involved an alien hedgehog. The only reason we even know this is because information about Project Shadow was attached to Robotnik's name and discovered as Gunn was clearing all records of him from their database. Quote from the movie, When we were wiping Robotnik off our database, we found something. A file buried deep in our system and dating back over 50 years. What was it? Coordinates, sir. Coordinates? To what? A secret research facility. It was a black site, sir. Someone worked very hard to keep this hidden. My god. Project Shadow. I want you to keep Commander Walters' last four words of the film in mind. First, we need to establish a timeline. Sonic 2 takes place eight months after the first film. We don't know when the first one is set. It could be the originally planned release year of 2019 or a pandemicless 2020. I'm going to assume the latter, and that Sonic 2 either still takes place in 2020 or early into 2021. Plus, a year's difference will more than likely end up being negligible for reasons that you'll soon see. The agent does say over 50 years, but we don't know by how much, so we're going to end up with a little margin. Now, if you've done the math already, this means that Project Shadow was conducted in the late 60s to early 70s. You know what that means. Shadow comes from the era of disco. In all seriousness, now we have a timeline for the events that will probably be important in Sonic 3. And just for good measure, yes, it is possible that a computer file could even be over 50 years old in the first place. The computers at the time may have been massive and only had a few megabytes of RAM, but that's still a lot of room when all you have to store is a set of coordinates. We do see some machines, possibly computers near Shadow's stasis pod, that look like they'd be around that area, but I guess none of this matters anyway when we're dealing with the Robotnik family. They could have invented much more powerful computers than what was available at the time. We don't know if this extends to other forms of technology like the Space Colony Arc, but I suppose that's not off the table. That tangent aside, we also need to address the black site where Shadow is being held at. A black site is described as a secret facility used by a country's military as a prison and interrogation center whose existence is denied by the government. In the Sonic video game lore, this perfectly matches the description of Prison Island, and since Stone is posing as a gun agent, it's possible that Dr. Robotnik will learn the black site's location from him and, just like in Sonic Adventure 2, infiltrate the site and awaken Shadow. I'm willing to bet that this shot of his stasis pod rising will be reused in Sonic 3, much like how the shot of Tails arriving on Earth in the first movie was recreated for the second with a few details changed. Before I get to the big question, I want to clear something up about Gunn's conception in the film continuity. Commander Walter states that Gunn was formed because of what happened in San Francisco in the first movie. Sonic was running around in the open, and obviously there were a lot of witnesses. In response, Gunn was created to stop alien threats from ever happening like that again. With Gunn being a recent creation, they could not have been the ones to shut down Project Shadow like in the games, if an event happened like that at all. We'll just have to wait and see. Alright, now it's time for the big question. If Dr. Robotnik was an orphan, 
How could someone in his family, again, for simplicity, we're going to assume Gerald Robotnik, have been involved with Project Shadow? Option 1, he lied about being an orphan and knew all along. This one we can immediately debunk because in the first movie, he scans Sonic's oddly humanoid feet and is unable to match it to anything in Earth's animal kingdom. If he had known about Project Shadow, he could have compared Sonic's biometric data to that of Shadow and identified what he was immediately. He's also surprised when he sees Sonic for the first time as he's interrogating Tom, so this was all new to him. Option 2, he was kept from knowing about his family and was assigned by someone who did know. Now, this may sound like an odd hypothesis, but stay with me. Robotnik worked with the United States government until the end of Sonic 1, and had accomplished many things as Commander Walters mentions. Remember the coup in Pakistan? No. Or the uprising in Azerbaijan? It's not even a country. Exactly. And you can thank Robotnik for that. And he was insistent on assigning Dr. Robotnik to investigate the national blackout caused by Sonic in Montana, despite everyone else's objections against it. Could it be that Walters knew Robotnik would be the right choice for the job because he had seen an event like this before? Perhaps there was something he wasn't telling. Remember the reveal when he name drops Project Shadow? As I covered, the only information gotten out of that file was the coordinates for the black site. So how does he immediately know that it involves Project Shadow? I think he was there. He saw Shadow. Consider his age. Walters' actor, Tom Butler, is 71 years old as of the making of this video. Now, we don't know how old the character in the movie is supposed to be, but subtracting 50 from 71 is 21 years old. Old enough to be in the US military, so he could have been one of the soldiers that raided the Ark or whatever facility Project Shadow was being conducted at. Again, if they go that route like in the games. So he could be like that soldier from Sonic X who killed Maria. But more likely, I think he draws inspiration from the gun commander seen in the Shadow the Hedgehog video game. They both have gray hair, they're both commanders of gun, obviously, and they knew about Project Shadow. It all lines up. But where does our Robotnik fit into this? Well, like Walters, we don't know his exact age, and I got a feeling that he's not supposed to be 60 like his actor Jim Carrey. If that were the case, Robotnik would be around 10 years old when Project Shadow was happening, and would remember that he's not an orphan. If Robotnik was an infant or had not been born yet when Project Shadow went sideways, maybe Walters pulled some strings behind the scenes so that Robotnik would have grown up to think he was an orphan. Then years later, when Robotnik became as scientifically talented as his family before him, Commander Walters gave him the resources and funding to do all sorts of things for the government. And if Shadow's kind ever returned and posed a threat to the world, Walters knew who to call. And if you have any doubt that he would do something like this, Operation Catfish in the second film proves that he's not above manipulating people's lives. So yeah, this is my leading theory. Except, there's one problem. At the end of the first film, Commander Walters commends the Wachowskis for saving Green Hills by giving them an Olive Garden gift card, and denies that Dr. Robotnik ever existed. In the second film, he shows concern when Maddie informs him that Dr. Robotnik is back in play. He even says later that Gunn confiscated everything from Robotnik, including his lab, drones, and funding. So why would he turn on Robotnik so easily if he were playing the long game with him? Well, consider the events in San Francisco again. Robotnik caused a lot of property damage and threatened the lives of at least two civilians. If that didn't convince Walters that Robotnik was too dangerous to keep around, he was most certainly outvoted by his government contemporaries. That may have been another reason for the formation of Gun, as a backup for alien threats in case Robotnik wasn't an option. In any case, I assume Commander Walters will have a much bigger role in Sonic the Hedgehog 3 than he did in the first two films, especially if they've been setting him up to be the movie universe's equivalent of the Gun Commander from Shadow's spin-off game. I also find it very fascinating that, just like the Owls in the second film, aliens from Sonic's homeworld have visited or have resided on Earth long before Sonic, and in a time period like the 60s or 70s, that would make for some very interesting interactions between the aliens and humans or human culture. So I'm really curious how far back they'll explain Shadow's origins and lineage, like where Gerald Robotnik got the alien hedgehog genetic material to create Shadow. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you think. Does Dr. Robotnik already know about Shadow the Hedgehog? And does Commander Walters have a history with the aliens of Sonic's world? Please consider leaving a like, and if you're new, check out my channel and subscribe if you want more content like this. And if you want to follow me on social media, I have links to Twitter and Discord in the description. 
With all that said, I hope you enjoyed, have a nice day, and thank you for your time.